I'm the director of the Kupferberg Holocaust Center, and I welcome you here to our sixth annual Holocaust Freedom Seder. Uh, our first one started off with 75 people. Uh, we're now up to 280 people. Uh, I would like to have 300, except the fire department said you can only have up to 260. We negotiated with them. But I would like to tell you one thing, that if anybody here wanted to make money on this Seder, all you could have done was gone on eBay and sold your tickets to the Kupferberg Holocaust Freedom Seder. We had about two dozen people on our waiting list who called, can you believe someone called 11 o'clock last night to find out if we had said? Anyhow, what I want to point out a few things to you, and if I can have your attention. If I could have your attention, please. Okay. A few things that you should know before we start our Seder. Number one, Number one, our caterer today is a and A caterers. They are kosher. They are certified by the Rod Rabani of Queens County, in case any of you ask. And many of you ask, is the food salty enough or not salty? The answer is yes. Okay, so you'll understand that. More important, behind me, on my left-hand side, your right-hand side, are the bathrooms. That always becomes a question when we come there. They're the bathrooms right behind me. Secondly, I want to thank, and I know the representative isn't here, will be here later, the representative of Sinai Chapels. Uh, they have, in a large extent, underwritten this say. I don't want to say, since they're such good supporters, go out and use them right away, but you understand. You understand. Secondly, Secondly, each of you today, when you came in here, received a copy of the Haggadah that we are using. This is a very, very unique Haggadah. Up until now, the most traditional Haggadah we used is this one known as the Maxwell House Haggadah. Everybody here has had it. If you were born in 1940, 50, or 60, you have a very good idea what we mean by the Maxwell House Haggadah. It's probably the most popular Haggadah ever printed. The Haggadah that we're using today is called the Survivor's Haggadah. It was printed in Munich, Germany in 1946 at the first Seder held after World War II in a DP camp. And what's very unique about this Seder is it's a somewhat traditional, but it takes leave at certain parts. And the really exciting part about using it today is that one of the people who is affiliated with the Kupferberg Center, uh, Mr. Steve Berger, and I'll introduce him to you later, who was a survivor, also happened to land up in the DP camp in Munich. And not only was he familiar with it, but he, in a large extent, was responsible for putting together and printing it. And he is going to talk to us again. I also want to point out a few other things, that this did not come about by itself, that this was done in partnership with the Northeast Queens Jewish Community Council and the Queens Jewish Community Council. Those two groups are always with us and always supportive of us. And finally, before I introduce the participants in today's program who will be leading this Seder, if you're at all interested in any materials for your Seder, we have right behind us a Passover gift shop. For those of you who come to the Kupferberg Center once a year to come to the Seder and never come again, let me just ask you one thing. We always need your support. We always need your support. $25 membership. So if you haven't paid up $25 membership and you want to start the day off right, 
Don't be a schnorrer. See us, and we'll gladly take you $25, okay? I would like to introduce two people who will be leading our Seder. Uh, Rabbi Alan Block, Rabbi Emeritus. Rabbi, would you come up, please? And Cantor Susan Agin. And please, and I'm going to turn it over to them. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, is it working? Okay. Welcome, as you know, this is the sixth annual Holocaust Seder, and we're certainly honored to be here with you. It's a special moment for us as Jewish people to reflect on the past of our history, and particularly the Holocaust. Need I tell everyone here the, the meaning of the Holocaust to us as survivors is so important. Those of you who were on working they're on. They're on. Can you hear? You. Okay. We have nothing, Tom. One, 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 one. Very little. There we go. Uh, there must be a loose wire. One, one. We got a loose wire here. One, one. Can you hear me on this one? Good. Thank you. Those of you, of course, who are survivors from the Holocaust and came to our shores of America, we are deeply appreciated you coming to America, starting a new life. But most important in fact that we want to remember those who've entered not only Yeshiva Shel Shalayim, but all those who came to this country for what we stood for. Is it still? You can't hear. Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay, very good, very good. While they're getting ready to install a new microphone, let me extend my uh, good wishes for my dear colleague and friend and mentor, Rabbi Agin, who regret could not here be with us this afternoon, but I know certainly would want to be. Uh, because of the time and change, uh, he was a unable to be with us, but certainly his good wishes and prayers are with us as well. All of you know about the Haggadah. This is a special Haggadah. In 1946, when the war ended, Rabbi uh, Avraham Klausner, with some friends, got together in Munich, Germany, and wrote up what we call the Passover Seder, the Holocaust Seder. And this is really not a regular Passover Seder because Pesach begins next week. But this is really a reflection upon all of us, not only what occurred during the Holocaust and the Second World War, but also what is our wish, our thought, and our prayers, that never again should we as a Jewish people be faced with such atrocities. Those of you who are here with us, may we see the hands of those of you who left and who were survivors of the Holocaust. Do we have anyone here? Isn't that A round of applause for, with them, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. I cannot tell you how important it is for us to acknowledge and to remember this day and all the days in relation to the Holocaust because their memory lingers in our hearts as a source of strength. To you who are with us, we want to thank you, as I mentioned before, for coming to the shores of America, for creating a new home, not only for yourselves, but for us as well and for the Jewish people. The greatness of America has always been all its people. And that's why I personally feel a special honor for welcoming each and every one of you. Those of you who are children of the Holocaust, tell the stories, hear the stories of what your parents told you. Pass it on to the other children. 
Because if we do not remember, the world will not remember. And we cannot leave it to the rest of the world to decide whether they want to tell the stories of the Holocaust or not. We know the president of Iran denies the Holocaust. And we also know there was a professor in England who wrote that the Holocaust never existed. But we Jews must remind the world of the Holocaust that never again should this ever happen. This is not only affliction among the Jewish people, but I like to interpret it as affliction amongst God. And our message is, Israel must live if the Almighty, the Rabbani Shalom, is to live as well. So what we're going to do this afternoon is to go over our Haggadah, do some singing, some talking, and to have a sense of spirit. Because for us, it's a time of reflection. Reflection from the time of Yitzhak Mitzrayim of going out of Egypt to the present day, that we shall always live as a people. That's been part of our commitment to the Rabbana Shalom to God. So I'm going to ask that you take your booklet. And we shall begin the reading of our Seder on page 5. And I want everyone to feel comfortable. If you feel you want to join along with me in the reading, please do, please do so, or with the cantor. Join with her in singing as well. How often our people has had to defy prejudice and slander, hatred, oppression. In many lands and ages, a Moloch and his cruel descendants have risen up against us, and untold suffering has been our lot. For our loyalty to God and to our ancestral's heritage, we have paid dearly together. But the same heritage has given us strength to bear our suffering and our dignity, fortitude, and to remain unshaken in our convictions that in the end, good must triumph over evil, truth over falsehood, and love over hatred. We have survived all those who vowed to destroy us. We lament those and perish those in the hands. We give thanks for the many deliverances and for the steadfast faith of those who endured, whose love of life did not falter. They have left us an example of courage never to be forgotten. This time we're going to join with the cantor in singing Shecha Yonam because we arrived at a special moment in our lives. Okay, um, it's number one on your song sheets, and uh, this is the uh, this is the Sephardic uh, Shechianu. Carlos is going to help me out. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehechianu Vekimanu Thank you, Cantor. Thank you. On page six, the question that all of us always ask, why? Why? And together let us read why. Why is the word that permeates all we do on Passover? Why do we eat matzah 
Why do we eat bitter herbs? Why do we drink four glasses of wine? Why do we recline in our chairs at the table? The list grows and the Seder continues as we seek to explain both to adults and children the many wives of Passover. Yet in 1946, we remembrance of the Jewish community emerged from the Holocaust. The questions of why become more unprevalent. Why did I survive? Why did my loved ones destroy? Why do I continue to suffer? Why? From Israel, a Holocaust uh, victim and writer, confronts the question of why in his book, The Survival of Auschwitz. He describes the incident upon his arrival in Auschwitz. Driven by thirst, I eyed a fine icicle outside the window. Within hands reached, I opened the window and broke, broke off part of the icicle. But at once, a large heavy guard prowling outside brutally snatched it away from me. For whom? I asked. Why? I asked in my poor German. There is no why here, he replied, pushing me aside with a shove. And so together, why do we celebrate a Holocaust freedom Seder? To maintain our tradition, to keep faith with our survivors of the Holocaust, to reemphasize human dignity, to rejoice in the freedom in a, and to live in a world where there's always an answer for why. In every generation, one should regard oneself as though he came out of Egypt. Hine matovu manayim shevetachim gam yachad. I encourage you to join in with me. This is the traditional Hine Matov. It's number two on your song sheets. And what we're going to do is we're going to split you in half. Okay, so this is going to be group one. And we're going to split it right about over here. And this is going to be group two. Okay, so the first, now you all have to learn the song. And then we're going to take turns singing the different parts. So let's sing the whole song together once so that we refresh our memories how it goes. Carlos, you with us just a little slower. Here we go. He name atovu manaim shevet achim kam yachad. He name atovu manaim shevet achim kam yachad. Now the second part. He name atov shevet achim kam yachad. He Okay, everybody has it? Group one, you're going to start. Emil, I'm counting on you to help me lead group one here, okay? So group one, you're going to start. You're going to start singing, go through the whole song. And when they finish halfway through the song, we're going to come in group two. Are you with me? Let's try it out. Carlos. Thank you. Group one, here we go. Hine matovu manayim shevet achim gam yachad again. Hine matovu manayim shevet achim. Now you're gonna go to the second part. Here we go. Group two. Hine matovu manatov shevet achim gam yachad. Hine matovu manayim shevet achim gam ya. Go back to the beginning. Hine. Hine matov shevet achim gam ya. Everybody all together. He named Last time. He named Give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you. How good and how pleasant it is for all of us to come together, and there we should dwell in peace and harmony. Now, 
We come to recall the Munich Seder, and to assist us in our service, I'm going to call upon Dr. Shames. The Munich Seder and the khaki-clad sons of Israel, commanded by Lieutenant General Truscott, gathered together gathered together, as was the custom in Israel, to celebrate the Passover festival. They spoke of Pharaoh and the Egyptian bondage. They spoke of slave labor and the torture cities of Pitham and Ramses. And they spoke of the inevitable force of liberty, which will lay waste to every tyrannical government. But in their hearts, they felt very close to all which was narrated. Pharaoh and Egypt gave way to Hitler and Germany. Pitham and Ramses faded beneath fresh memories of Buchenwald and Dachau. The driving spirit of the victory they felt was the same, but the leadership had changed. Great allied armies replaced the ancient handful, and in the sacred conviction of Moses, now stood General Dwight D. Eisenhower. Just beyond the Psalms of the Seder, in the wreckage of the city, the former slaves sat in company with their tantalizing memories and celebrated their first Seder since liberation. But they knew more. They knew that freedom could not be given to one people and withheld from another. They knew that freedom could not be qualified. Now, more than ever, they understood what the Lord meant when he said to Moses, they are my slaves and they dare not be enslaved to slaves. These words now sounded a warning to the world at large, for in the slavery of a single human being, the world would find itself enslaved. Thank you. Telling the story of Passover, we were slaves to Pharaoh in Egypt. This statement, which has been recited at every Seder table since the liberation from Egypt, took a new meaning in 1946, and it was transformed into, we were slaves to Hitler in Germany. Page 10. The underlining message of this night, and let us all read together. In every generation, it is one's duty to look upon himself as if personally he had come out of Egypt. For we were commanded, tell your children that in that day it has become what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. It was not our forefathers whom the Lord saved, he saved us too. For it is written, he took us out of there so that he might bring us home and give us the land as he had promised our forefathers. Uh, page three on your song sheets, Vahi Shayamda. Vahi Shayamda, Vahi Oh, <laughs> 
on page 11, the Seder plate. And even though you may not have a Seder plate in front of you, you will certainly have it during the Passover Seder. The Seder plate is a Jewish tradition feast. The Seder plate is set with symbols, symbolic Jewish foods. Moror, horseradish providing the taste of bitterness, which our ancestors tasted as slaves in Egypt. Carpus, greens promising spring and a new life. But dip once in salt water to remind us of the tears of oppression brought by on by our enslavement. And charosis, nuts, wine, and bitterness, and bitters to represent the mortar used by slaves to build the empire of the country which enslaved us. An egg, promising rebirth of the possibility and change from tyranny to freedom. And the bone, which is really called the Paschal Lamb in our emergencies from slavery to freedom. And matzah, the bread of affliction, to remind us of our enslavement. And now, of course, we go on to the four questions. And always... Some children. Yes. yes. And that's what we're looking for, some children, I understand, who are with us. We, uh, we, uh, we come now to the part of the four questions. By the way, someone just stopped me with the ultimate compliment. They said, your Seda is so much better than what my Bubby and Zeta used to have. I, I said, how come? It's shorter. Okay, so we now come to the part that everybody likes to have. Everybody likes to fell. We have some professional children here that are part, and, and this is a very unique group of children I'm going to call up. We have a group of survivors that come and meet regularly at the Kupferberg Holocaust Center. And not only we get together and talk about things of concern and interest, but these men and women make themselves readily available to our students to speak at other colleges, other schools, other synagogues, and uh, one of them is Ruth Torek. And Ruth Torek, whenever we have a Seda, she says to me, it's the usual, and the usual is we have a table. So Ruth, would you send your granddaughters up here and one of your grandsons so we can do it? I know you've been practicing all semester for this. When I went over, I said, who's going to do it? Everybody pointed to the other. He's going to do it, he's going to do it, he's going to do it. So now we have the full chorus coming up. Any other children? Please, come up. Come on up. There we go. Okay. We'll do both. Okay, here we go, ladies. Come on up. Yeah. No, notice how happy they look. Just as happy as my grandchildren when I say you got to say the hug. Okay, so let's go together. Why is this night different from all other nights? On all other nights, we eat either leavened or unleavened bread. Why on this night only unleavened bread? Perfect. Okay, you read on. On all other nights, right here. On all other nights, we eat all kinds of herbs. Why on this night only bitter herbs? One more. Go ahead. On all other nights, we, not, we need not dip our herbs even once. Why on this night do we dip twice? Excellent. Last one. On all other nights, we eat either sitting up or reclining. Why on this night do we recline? Excellent. Okay. Now we're going to have our Hebrew readers. Ma nishtana halayla hazeh mikol halelot. Shebechol halelot anu ochlin chametz umatzah halayla hazeh kulo matzah. 
Shebachol halelot anu ochlin she'ar yirakot halayla haze maror. Shebachol halelot ain anu madbilin afilu pam echad alayla haze shetei peamim. Shebachol halelot anu ochlin ben yushvin u ben mesubin alayla haze kulanu mesubin. Please. Thank you, thank you. And that's the future generation of the people of Israel. On page 14 in your Haggadah, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to call upon Emil who's going to share with us in the reading. The story of our bondage, and they inflicted us with hard bondage. Please, to quote my Zeta Solzain Shah. And if you want the translation, please see me at the end of the Seda. Is that in the cup? Just as the children of Israel were enslaved by Pharaoh to build the mammoth store cities of Pitham and Ramesses, so were they enslaved by Hitler to build the infrastructure of the Nazi society. During the Holocaust, it became the task of the captives to build gas chambers and crematoria, death and labor camps, railroads and highways that all became part of the apparatus of their future annihilation. What could one say to himself after being enslaved to work upon such an evil undertaking? Jankil Wernick, a carpenter at work in the camps, and an underground leader, speaking to the world in an almost Dostoevsky voice, gives us a detailed account of the mass murder at Treblinka that opens with, Dear Reader, it is for your sake that I continue to hang on to my miserable existence, though it has lost all attraction to me. How can I breathe freely and enjoy all that which nature has created? I sacrificed all those nearest and dearest to me, I myself took them to the execution site. I built their death chambers. Do I look like a human being? No, definitely not. Disheveled, untidy, destroyed. It seems as if I were carrying the load of a hundred centuries on my shoulders. The load is wearisome, very wearisome, but for the time being, I must bear it. Thank you. Thank you, Emil. Thank you so much. Uh, the next person I'm going to ask to read and share their experiences with is one of those unique people that are part of our uh, survivors group, Anita Weisbord. Anita Weisbord had the unique experience of being a member of the kinder transport person, one of 10,000 children that Hitler said, I'll leave Germany and Austria, but who would take them? And England stood up and said, we will take you. And I'd like to call on Anita Weisbord. I read this every year at my own Seder. Living narrative is the blood of our people. Tonight, as we retell the story of the exodus of the children of Israel from Egypt, we add my story of our own miraculous escape from slavery much greater than in Egypt, from terror and from death. We were the condemned of Hitler in Germany. Had we not been brought forth, we would not have, we would have perished. We would have had no husbands or wives, no children or grandchildren, would not have been born. We are the kinder, the children of Israel of 1939, our children and their children. Together we represent the 10,000 saved from the flames and the hundreds of thousands of generations who were not. The burning synagogues of November 1938, Crystal Night, was our pillar of fire the flame seen in Britain roused our fellow humans, Jews and Gentiles, to save us 
from our human and inhuman neighbors. They sent trains, transport, kinder transport to Berlin, Vienna, and Prague. Like the children of Israel in Egypt, who packed, we packed in haste, chanted as we crossed the border, passed over the dry shot. Unlike Israel of, in Egypt, who marched out as a whole people, fully armed with great leaders, we marched out alone, unarmed, some as babies in the arms of children. Our parents stayed behind. Our story is not one story, but 10,000 stories. How we endured, but what we have accomplished. Today, on the anniversary of the liberation from Egypt and the anniversary of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, we gather to celebrate our liberation. Thank you. Just beautiful. Just beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on page 15 in your Haggadah, this is a story about four sons. In reality, it should be four individuals because it should be not only the sons but the daughters as well. In every generation, there are people going to question, why is this day so important to us? Who wants to remember the going out of Egypt? Who wants to remember the Holocaust? What's so important? Why can't we be just like anyone else? We don't have to remember these things. We'll go on our life. The commitment as Jews is to remember Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. We went on not only a bondage, but ultimately to the promised land. For us as Jews, that is the promised land. The Holocaust reminds us that never again should we as Jews be inflicted, but equal other people as well. Because the strength of freedom is the strength of freedom for every individual, whether they live here in America or any other country as well. We hope other nations would learn from Israel, from the spirit of Israel, from the spirit of the Jewish people. Am Yisrael Chai. We as a people will live. They have gone. We have survived. And because we have survived, it is so important that human life continue to live in a full strength of dignity and freedom for every individual. So as you read in your own mind about the question of the four sons, keep in mind is our commitment as Jews, as Americans, as human beings to make this planet Earth a better place for everyone to live in. And those who accuse us of abandoning God or abandoning the world, we say to them, God has chosen us among all the other peoples to convey the message there is a God in the universe and ultimately we must acknowledge God's presence by our acts and deeds of kindness and of justice and peace. So for the four sons, we hope on your Pesach Seder, or four daughters, whoever they may be, that you would educate them the blessings of human life. How fortunate they are to live in a wonderful country. How fortunate for us that we can see Midnat Yisrael live in perish, does live in peace, not in perishment as well. So we come to the point to give thanks to God. And you'll find it in your Haggadah on page 16, Dayenu. And we always say Dayenu. It would have been enough. Give us a little thing. We're happy what we've got. But no matter how we persevered, we always give thanks to God. And so we're going to do some reading first in English, and then we're going to join with a chazan and a golden, beautiful voice in singing Dayenu. The traditional Dayenu is perhaps one of the best-known parts of the Passover Seder. It is a joyous, robust announcement of what God has done for the Jewish people. Dayenu, of the Munich Seder of 1946, recites not, God, not only God's blessing as it is tradition, but also its affliction. In the historical manner, both joyous and otherwise, had he scattered among the peoples of the nation, but not given us the first crusades, what do we all say? Dayenu, had he given us the first crusades and not the blood libel, Dayenu, had he given us the badge of shame and not the persecution of the, the black plague, we would have said Dayenu, 
had he given us persecution of the Black Plague, but not the Inquisition, we would say, die nu. Had he given us the Inquisition, but not the pogroms of 1648, we would say, die nu. Had he given us the slaughter of the Ukraine in 1919, but not Hitler, we would have said, die nu. Had he given us Hitler, but not the ghettos, we would say, die nu. Had he given us the ghettos, but not the gas chambers or crematory, we would say, die nu. Had he given us the gas chambers and the crematories, but our wives and children had not been murdered, we would have said, die nu. On your song sheets, uh, number four, we're going to do the traditional die nu. Number four, and I, I would love for all of you to join in with me, Carlos. Ilu hoti hoti anu hoti anu mi mitrayim hoti anu mi mitrayim die anu everyone die die anu die die anu. We're going to have another round of that, if I may. Had, well, he, on, Carlos. had he not brought us to the shores of America, we would say die nu. But on the other hand, had he not brought us here at Queens Community College at our Seder, we would also say die nu. But we say die nu because it's never enough for us to come together and to be together as a people. Die nu, Carlos. Die, die nu. Die, die nu. Die, die. Thank you, Chazam. Just beautiful, just beautiful. Now we turn to page 18. You know, there are 10 plagues, and on your Seder night, you'll be taking out 10 drops of wine, signifying the fact that the Egyptians were also part of God's children. The fact that these people turned away from us, not only from the Jewish people, but really I interpreted they turned away from God. So we have the 10 plagues, and the 10 plagues of Munich Seder as well. The ten plagues of Passover, we could all read that together on the left-hand side. Blood, frogs, lice, vermin, cattle disease, boils, hail, locusts, darkness, and the slaying of the firstborn. And now, sadly, we have to mention ten other names and join with me as our hearts are heavy. Auschwitz, Megan, Jabrinkla, Dachau. Bergen-Belsen, Soberio, Malatai, Chimnos, Gur, and Warsaw Ghetto. And there was silence. How many stood aside mute and unconcerned, forgetting the divine commandment, you should not stand idle while your neighbor bleeds. Response of reading, for the sin of silence, for the, for the secret complicity of the neutral, for the washing of hands, 
together. Let there be no forgetfulness before the throne of God, and let the memory start us in a sunny afternoon in a silence when we with our friends, when we lie down, and when we rise up. As it is recorded, carved into the heavens in this wooden cut are God's word to Abram, Lech lechol el ha'aretz, go forth to the land, and we say Israel. And now on page 20, a poem by Pavia Friedman, of course, and uh, it's a beautiful poem about the butterfly, and if you wish, ladies and gentlemen, we could all read it together, because I want you to remember this poem. The last together, and the very last, so richly, brightly, dazing yellow, perhaps it was the sun's tears would sing against the white stone such a yellow it carved lightly the it went away i'm sure because it wished to kiss the world goodbye for seven weeks i lived in here but i have found what i loved here the dandelions called to me and the white chestnut branches in the courts only i have never saw another butterfly that butterfly was the last one Butterflies don't live in here, in the ghetto. And of course, he was uh, born in uh, January 7th, the year 1921 in Prague. He was deported, of course, and went to his death in Auschwitz in the year September 29th, in 1944. As we remember those who've entered in Yeshiva Shoshamayim, may their memories ever be, be to all of us a source of inspiration and abide among the benediction of our people, that we may truly go forward as a people and be a blessing to all life. Now we have a concluding before we do that. I'm going to ask for a moment, ladies and gentlemen, that you turn to your family and friends in the right and left, whoever they may be, and wish one, of course, a good year, a system Pesach, because Pesach will be next week. So just turn to one another. What do we have? Let's do Oh, a, we didn't do this one. We can do Eliyahu. We can do... Where's that? You want to skip that to Ani Ma'ani? Yes. Okay. Okay. Now that you greeted one another... Ani Ma'ani. Let's do this. Right. We're going to bypass this? Okay. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen... Okay. Turn to page 23 in your Haggadah. 23. It's in the spirit of Pesach that we rejoice. We are free. Hopefully other people can learn from us and become free as well. How can we give thanks when we remember Treblinka? Only silence speaks loudly enough for our millions who were marched into abyss. We have been, we have been wherever we did not find you, O hidden one. Yet even there, even there our people sang, I believe in redemption, Ani Mamim, and they sang again. And even then, in deathless people, was reviewing itself, its life. Whose faith is equal to this people? Who shall live in the storm ends, in the skies of a rainbow signals of hope, a new life again, and yet again? And there is a song to sing, Ani Mamim. Please join me on, a page, uh, uh, on your song sheets number seven. We'll sing, I believe, Ani Ma Amin. Ani Ma Amin. Ani Ma Amin. Ani Ma Mani Mamin Vialla Pi Shait Mameha Im Kose Ani Mamin Vialla Pi Shait Mameha Im Kose Ani Mamin
I believe. At this point, I'd like to call up Steve Berger. Steve? And while he's coming up, are there any people here today, I know two, and I'd like to ask them to stand, who are in the Munich DP camp? Anyone? Okay, we have in the back and Steve. Okay, Steve? Thank you, Arthur. I am not going to repeat the story of the survivors Haggadah because it's in your booklet. However, the original survivors Haggadah had seven woodcuts by an artist at the time when the Haggadah was made didn't know who he was. Now let me read you a short strip from the New York Times some years back. We said about the Haggadah. The Haggadah was forgotten, the survivors Haggadah after the war. For many years, nobody talked about it. Then, a few years after, a professor of Brandeis University, Saul Tauster, a retired professor of law and social policy at Brandeis University, was sifting through four generations worth of family papers when a copy of the survivor's Haggadah fell out of a box of his late father's papers. On its cover was a white letter A in red and blue, emblem of the third United States Army in Germany. Intrigued, Mr. Tauser set out to learn all he could about the curious Haggadah, even though he was proficient in neither Hebrew or Yiddish, a little doubling quickly became an obsession. It took two years of digging before Mr. Tauser identified the art artist of the seven wood gods in the original Haggadah as Miklos Adler, a survivor of Hungary. At the end of the war, Mr. Adler had returned to Debrecen his hometown and mine also, and had gone to work on a portfolio of 16 woodcuts. In a preface, Mr. Adler wrote, my means I know are modest and old fashioned. My style I know is poor. And yet I feel that I too must tell the follows, to follows in these pages O oh, my murdered brothers and sisters, who sanctified God's name, I will mourn you until I died. Well, Mr. Adler died in 1965. Now, I knew Mr. Adler very well. As Mr. Tauser, Professor Tauser later found out, one night, my phone rang, and somebody was asking for Mr. Berger. I said, it's speaking. He says, I am Saul Tauser, professor of Brandeis, and I'm looking of students of Mr. Adler. And somebody sent me to you. And he really went to the right place because I was a student of Dr. Adler. In the Debrecen Jewish Gymnasium, where I was a student, he was my homeroom teacher one time. I knew him well. I knew his family very well. And when the Germans came into Hungary, 
and they took all the Debrecen Jews to Auschwitz. Somehow, Mr. Adler and me were on the same train. But somehow, the SS officer who directed the train made a terrible mistake. Instead of sending the train to Auschwitz, he sent the train to Austria. to a Stasshof concentration camp. Well, I'm not going to go into detail because it's a long story. And unfortunately, Arthur and I, we always have conflicting ideas about the time I supposed to speak. But when came liberation, I didn't wait for the SS to come into our camp. I escaped. Unfortunately, Mr. Adler did not, and he was driven to Theresienstadt on foot where he was liberated. By the way, nobody knows that Mr. Adler was a handicapped person. One of his legs were shorter than the other, about three inches, and he wore a platform shoes. So in Auschwitz, he would have never survived. Now, before I close, I have some thoughts written down for myself. I like to read it to you. We witnessed a terrible devastation in Haiti several weeks ago. Our hearts and pockets opened up for the victims. We saw a wonderful and rightful response from all over the world. Help came immediately. But this world has a double standard. This same world stood by for decades while our people were robbed, tortured, murdered. This world was silent while innocent children, women and men were killed by the most barbarian way. This is what I think on this day of remembrance. This world even helped the murderers by locking the gates of escape, the Evian Conference, the British blockade of Palestine, and I could go on and on. Therefore, our strength must be in ourselves. Dieno. Thank you. Before. Before Steve sits down, uh, let me tell you something he hasn't told you. Aside from being a survivor, aside from being a slave laborer, aside from being an, art, an artist who helped put this together, Steve did one other, well, he's done many things, but one other thing which he talked about once when we had a Kristallnacht commemoration. And he will be talking again because it's an amazing story. You know, some people have one story, it starts off, live happily ever after, it ends that way. With Steve, the stories never stop. And the more you speak to Steve, the more you find out, aside from just being in the DP camp, Steve undertook another responsibility with the Bricha. Now, the Bricha was a Jewish organization, a secret organization, that was used to smuggle Jews out of the DP camps into Palestine. We didn't call it Israel then, we called it Palestine. And Steve will tell you the stories, and he's going to do it again because we're going to include him in our program next semester. We'll tell you the story of 
when the war was over, it just didn't end and everybody went home to live happily ever after. A new battle started, and Steve will tell you how he spent many, many months of his life after the war smuggling people out of Europe into Palestine. Steve, thank you so much. Okay, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Uh, before we come up and sing the Hatikva, I'd like those people here who are survivors to please stand. Please stand. Those people who are survivors, please. Okay? Thank you so much. Okay? Now, while you're standing, I'd like everybody else to stand and join us in Hatikva. Susan? While we're standing, ladies and gentlemen, um, I want to thank our Chazan cantor, Susan Egan, for her beautiful voice and leading us in a service. A round of applause to her. And to Arthur as well for putting this together. Yasha Koch to you. And to the survivors and everyone here, Tell the stories. People have to learn. People have to know what really took place. So never again should it happen to us or to anyone else. Chazan Hatikva, our hope and our prayer. Thank you. This is number nine. Number nine. Call on Bali. Give Israel with peace and shalom as well as America. God bless each and every one. Bete Avon, you may be seated in time for your meal.